friends welcome again to the machine tool design learning group today in this video i am going to cover the basic elements of press tool whenever you see the press tool it is comprised of lot of different parts so it looks like a big uh, box assembly but if you see there are different elements so if i go ahead and see the construction of a press tool first like i will see is a top plate then we have punch back plate then we have punch holder plate punch stripper plate um die plate die back plate bottom plate guide pillar guide bush and stopper so we have to individually design these elements to make a better best press tool so that it work very efficiently so i will just start with a die plate the reason i will start a die plate is because whenever you start with a blanking tool piercing tool or trimming tool the first thing you are going to do is cutting force and then you are going to find a cutting length so now the die plate will be the first plate which will be designing and from that from that we will design all other plates so let's start with a die plate now so now let's start with die plate die plate is the consist of basic cutting land and a clearance okay so die plate should be hard enough so the first thing we are going to uh see in the die plate is what kind of material to be used the die plate material is always anoy steel or that that is a die steel so it will be d2 d3 hcfcr or wps so and then first whenever after machining before a uh, grinding you have to harden and template that is you have to send it to the good quality a company which does hardening and tempering remember guys lot of times what happens is uh, the the the, the hard, hardening company forgets to tempering the temper the uh, die plate or punch plate or whatever you are getting so what happens is whenever the first stroke comes from the press it cracks and then we don't know what is whenever uh, in the machine tool whenever you send for hardening you can test hardening but there is no uh, any proof for tempering so you have to ensure your uh, hardening agent or hardening company that you are have you tempered my steel or not okay now what will be the thickness of die plate then the thickness of die plate is cube root of fss where fsh equal to shear force in tons remember guys in my previous video i have given a detail a uh, detail video of how to calculate shear force of uh, shear force of a die so you can if you want to calculate shear force you can just go back and look into uh, my other video now the let's say that shear force is equal to assume 10 tons so then that if we put in this formula then it will go Ten cube root two three. That is that goes like two point one five centimeter. So you can just round off to twenty two mm. So now you can take a die plate of twenty two on the safer side twenty five mm. And even like now remember that whenever this twenty two mm comes, you have to see the manufacturer chart that what is the availability standard availability thickness available so you can take if if like if you see if you go and see in the manufacturer chart there is 25 mm so you can just take 25 mm so that you don't have to machine too much like you don't have to need to do milling or 3 mm okay so that will be a designer's perspective so you can do this and then length and width of the die plate will be according to the profile and the guiding elements so you can you can decide according to that so now next uh, move ahead to next next thing that is a die back plate now we have die back plate basically die back plate uh, fits below the die so that the thrust force which is coming out to the die 
can be absorbed by the diaphragm and it should not be transferred to directly bottom plate. Okay, so diaphragm plate has a, a fixing elements to the bottom plate and the diaphragm plate, and it has a relief. That is the slug which is going to flow from the die should be relieved from here. Only this is the function. So it holds die back die plate and it holds die plate to the bottom plate and it's relieved. The material used for the die back plate is mostly the mice steel. And if it is a very big uh, uh, press, you can also go for cast iron. But mostly it is mice steel. Now the thickness of uh, die back plate is 0.5 into TD. That is TD is, you remember the term TD, in uh, all this video I am going to use TD as die plate thickness. So 0.5 is equal to the 0.5 to TD, that is TD equal to die plate thickness. So remember we have, we have uh, designed die plate thickness as 22 mm. So 0.5 into 22 it will be 11 mm. So it will be 11 mm uh, thickness of die back plate. And mostly the length and width will be equal to the die, die plate. So you can go ahead designing these three elements. Again, again guys, here if it is coming 11 mm, you can see if 11 mm is available or 12 mm is available. We can go ahead and use 12 mm, but don't go below this because it will uh, reduce the cons uh, uh, construction of your um, um, brush tool. Okay, so now let's go ahead with the bottom plate. So now we have bottom plate. The bottom plate has two functions. One, it hold, it fixes the tool to the press machine. One and two, it holds die plate. And it and the third function that is either a very uh, substitute function that if you are not able, the height of the uh, press uh, tool is getting very low according to the press machine. So you can put some block and raise the height. Uh, so it also caters this uh, application, but that is according to the manufacturer requirement. But if you see for designing, it has two functions. One is to fix the plate or the press tool onto the die uh, press machine and to hold the die plate. It, uh, then it uh, it is same as the die back plate, that is it relieves the slug to uh, clear the die and it has a uh, guide pillar and guide, guide bush elements onto it. The material used for bottom plate is mild steel or cast iron. See guys, when we have very big like uh, car roof dies or uh, we have a uh, big, uh, big, big, big 2 meter, 3 meter press tools, so we cannot have so much big mild steel um, MS uh, plate, so we can go for cast iron because we need more strength and we can have ribs and all that with the help of cast iron. Now the thickness of thickness of um, bottom plate will be 2 into TD. TD is equal to die plate thickness which was 22 mm calculated earlier. So we can use 44 mm uh, as a bottom tool thickness. So it can go 45 mm whatever is the standard available manufacturing available. Okay, so when and, and the length and thickness will be according to the uh, die plate plus the guiding element distance, and also you need a space where you can clamp the clamp uh, clamps on. You, are, you should have space for clamps onto the press machine. So accordingly, you can design uh, giving uh, some little bit more space so that uh, the operator can have uh, liberty to put clamps, if we have big clamps you can just put it here. So always think that you can have little uh, like 5 to 10 percent extra material onto the press tool always so that you can have uh, operator or you have liberty to modify the things after your uh, manufacture. So let's go ahead with the top plate now. So now let's study top plate. The function of top plate is to hold punch holder and that is the punching elements that is punch holder, punch back plate and punches. So basic function of top plate is to hold punching elements and guide the tool. So now the material used for top plate will be always mild steel or cast iron. Again if it is a very big tool we can go ahead with cast iron. 
then the thickness will be 1.5 into TD that is equal to 1.5 uh, 22 mm we calculated previously at a die thickness so it will be 33 mm so we can go ahead with many examples 36 mm to what or 35 mm whatever is available okay let's get ahead with punch back plate this is the punch back plate so now punch back plate has a function of holding punch plate to the top plate giving thrust force to the thrust uh, absorbing thrust from the punch and holding the punch so whenever the punch presses uh, it's so there will be a thrust force which is which will be acting on to top plate if punch back plate is not available so we give punch back plate sometimes uh, punch back plate is just uh, fitted with double and uh, allen bolts so that you can just fix it the material used for punch back plate is mostly mild steel or EN31 well mild steel is used when the force is not so high but if the force is high you have to go for EN31 because mild steel cannot be hardened it cannot achieve hardness so we can use EN31 where we can give harden the plate harden and temper again I am telling Harder than temper the plate from 48 to 52 HRC. Okay, and now calculating the thickness, thickness will be 0.5 into the thigh, uh, thickness of die plate. So that will be 0.5 into 22, that is 11 mm. So we can go ahead with 12 mm, is that uh, very easily available. So we can go ahead with 12 mm plate. Okay, so now let's go ahead with punch holder plate. So going ahead with punch holder plate design. Punch order plate will have a same construction, same length and width of punch back plate. Only, uh, but only difference will be there will be a counter bore uh, for punch to be inserted from there. The the punch inserted will be uh, if you see here the punch uh, collar will be there when student punch doesn't come uh, in the punch is holded in the bottom position. And then there will be a tight fit between uh, between the punches. So the, the bore which will be uh, given here will be a tight fit so that punch will punch should not buckle. Okay. Now the material used for punch plate is mostly MS. So that if if there is a there is some uh, some issue in the punch, uh, if there is an issue in the punch, so the punch should not break. The material uh, of punch holder being soft, it should well, so you, you replacing punch holder plate will be easier than replacing punch. So the thickness of punch holder plate will be 0.5 into 22 again, that will be 11 mm. So the same thickness uh, punch holder and punch back plate will have mostly the same material, same size of material, only material, uh, material type can change. Now let's get ahead with punch. So go ahead with punch. Punch will be the according to the shape of the profile to be cut. So if we have a shape of this, so punch will have this shape. So you do, according to that, you can select the raw material of the uh, block. Then the material used for the punch will be uh, die steel and alloy steel that is OHNS, WPS, HCNCR, D2, D3 according to the uh, application required. Then hardness for the punch will be hardness again I am saying hardness and tempering of the punch will be 58 to 62 HRC and the length that is height of the punch will be 60 to 80 mm according to the diameter. Guys, stripper plate is very essential part while making blanking tool or a piercing tool. Stripper plate has three functions. First thing, why it called stripper plate? Because it strips seed. Okay. So whenever a hole is being cut into the sheet, the strip uh, goes ahead and locks with the punch. So if stripper plate is present, the strip will be stripped off from the punch and punch will move ahead. Second thing it does is guides punch. So whenever punch comes down, uh, it has this guiding element which guides so that it goes exactly into the uh, opening into the die and third thing it does is guides the strip 
So if you have this uh, strip, so this strip comes and guides here. If you do not guide the strip, it will it will rotate uh, while going and you will not get the perfect path. So the stripper plate uh, has three function. Now the stripper plate material is MS, mostly MS. You use white steel, and uh, you have to you can you can go ahead with um, very good uh, material white steel, and the thickness will be thickness will be uh, one into die thickness that is 22 mm or more than that if the strip thickness is more that will be a problem so now we will go ahead and see the stopper stopper is an element which stops the strip so whenever a strip is fit uh, you, have, you need to have some reference point where you can stop this strip operator should stop the strip so this is a stropper, it is fitted onto die plate. It is a basically a small pin of dia 6 to 10 mm. So the material used for the stopper will be EA31 or EA24. Hardness will be 52 to 55 HRC. So you can use it one or two according to the size of width of the strip. Next we will go for the guide pillar and guide bush. Guide pillar and guide bush are the guiding element of the die. Whenever a uh, top plate, that is a moving plate, you can say moving uh, moving part of the press tool moves up, the guide pillar and guide bush uh, guides it because the punch comes out from the uh, die plate and stripper plate. So again, when it comes uh, downward position, punch should not uh, the die and uh, die or the uh, top assembly should be at the proper position. So these guide pillar and guide bush guide. Uh, guide bush is fitted into the um, fixed part that is the die plate bottom side and then die bush is located onto the top plate. Uh, the material used for the die plate is OHNS and hardness will be 50 to 55 HRC. Uh, you, even you don't need to make this guide pillar and guide bush. You can get this uh, from the um, suppliers like Mizumi or Fibro or even the local supplier makes this. So you can these uh, make uh, just buy out this and according to the uh, design of the supplier, you can bore hole in bore hole into your die plate and uh, top bottom plate and top plate. So you can just take uh, you, your supplier or your manufacturer can give you design of his guide pillar and guide screw. Just take uh, that and put it in your AutoCAD or 3D whatever you are making. So next we will go for the shank. Now shank fits onto the top plate. Shank is the element which locates your tool onto the press. There is a bore onto the press ram where this shank goes and fit and then you can screw it uh, or you can just lock it. So shank is an element which has to be designed according to the press machine available with the manufacturer. So you have to ask a manufacturer that let me know the bore in your RAM so that I can design the shank according to this. So shank is an element which locates your press tool. So you have to uh, design the shank. Sometimes when, when it is a very big press, you can give a shank plate. Uh, there is a big bore onto the or round, round plate. This is all designed according to the press machine available. So different press manufacturer has different uh, shank design according to their uh, machine. Um, design. So we can just go ahead with the shank. Now, so guys, the, in this way, we can design a whole press tool uh, plates and then make a construction and then individually make detailed drawing of each plate and release to the manufacturing. So we can just go ahead and uh, make this construction on AutoCAD 3D or wherever and make detailed design of a uh, Adventures. Thank you.